All right, so this is gonna be a video covering like introduction to modding for Elden Ring um, and kind of like setting expectations of like what that means or how difficult it is or isn't and kind of like the tools you're going to want and need for it. Um, I'm not going to do a deeply extensive breakdown of each individual tool in this video. I will make that a mini series here where I release like these, uh, I don't know, five minute videos or short little videos on each specific tool um, and, and kind of like what they do or how to use it if I feel that one of the tools is not self-explanatory enough or I don't already have a video on it. Um, that being said, um, we also just need to touch on um, if you are going into modding this game, like you have these gung-ho ideas of like mods you want to make, things you want to do, but you have never done it once before, um, just be warned, it is a little bit of an arduous task. Um, it's not undoable. Obviously, everybody that mods and has done that kind of stuff started somewhere, so like don't be discouraged by that. Um, I have a really cool Discord community where we are very welcoming of new modders and people that are trying to learn and ask questions. The whole purpose of this channel is to try and kind of like set people up for success. So that's why we're doing this video to begin with is to kind of introduce the tools and how things work um, and just being honest with skill sets that you may need. If you're trying to do, do models or do things with Blender or textures, uh, it will do you good to have a very basic understanding of Blender or a modeling software uh, or Photoshop or how textures work. It, it, doing some, some homework will help you out substantially, um, not going into it 110% blind because um, those are resources that are very, very abundant um, in the internets and all of that kind of stuff. Things regarding textures, models, Blender, um, that kind of stuff. The less documented stuff is the more custom software and things. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll start here with um, what I think I already have a video or two out on, but Mod Engine. Um, it is just a little uh, software that you can put your mods and folders of your your modding projects and things like that into it and it will keep it separate from your actual game directory um, so that way you don't do a bunch of shit in here and break it um, and then it also if you run it it will um, disable anti-cheat and keep you offline so you don't get banned or anything like that so um, that's kind of like the whole thing with it is you can put your mods in this mod folder it'll run them without interfering with anything in your vanilla game directory so you don't have to worry about breaking anything. Um, if you want to take apart your vanilla game directory, you would use a program called UXM, which I don't know why I minimized that because we're going to go in here. Um, UXM, I do have a video on, so again, I'm not going to touch too much into it, but that is a program here that you would want to download and then you would run that to the path of your game executable for Elden Ring, it'll unpack it, make it look like this. That's how you get to things like the parts file, the RAM files, uh, menu files, all that kind of stuff. So it it unpacks it for you, so things are more accessible. That's that's all it does. Um, it's it's very nice though um, for if you are making mods and you want to get to stuff. Um, but that's that's about the extent of UXM. It's, it's super crucial, though, for that purpose. Um, another thing that is worth mentioning is if you're going to be doing modding, organize it while you're doing it. Don't wait. Organize it while you're doing it. It can get out of hand. There's so many different little, like, add-ons or extensions or file types or softwares or you save multiple copies of something or blah, 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 blah. Just documented as you go like i have mods that i'm done with i have current armor characters weapons the tools for stuff like separated out as well like 
just do yourself a favor organize it as you do it um that's really the best advice i can give in terms of that um, especially for beginners so you don't confuse yourself just keep it clean you know um with that i will kind of move into a different program or software that you use uh, there's this software called yabber um, what that does is that allows you to open up these file types these file types are dcx uh, what you would do is you would just take that and then drop it on the yabber executable like that and it will unpack it into a separate file that is now accessible for you to get all up in its guts um, we don't need to get all up in his guts because it doesn't matter. Uh, to repack that folder, you would just take that, drop it back on Yabber, and then it will poop back out the packed version. Yabber is exclusively used for decompiling and recompiling um, those DCX folders. And then there's a couple other little ones like that, but it's that's that's what it does. It 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 unpacks these file types. Very important though, will help you out a ton. You won't get anywhere if you're not using Yabber. So that's just that. Um, if you are trying to do model editing, like I had mentioned previously, um, I primarily use Blender and then Photoshop for uh, textures and then all that kind of stuff. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, there are ways to, you know, just just get Photoshop, cough, cough, or something of that nature. Um, Paint.net works well as well, but my guides and videos and things like that will use Photoshop because that's what I have and that's what I'm familiar with for the most part. Um, there are some file extensions, or not file extensions, some like add-ons that you'll need for Photoshop. Uh, for DDS file types and things like that uh, for Blender. There are add-ons that you'll need for converting, um, like for, for importing uh, source materials and then to import source materials. Um, you, you are doing that because you need to convert the game's model file type, which is FLVR, I call it Fiverr. You have to convert that using a different tool to make it a source material and then you import that or blah 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 blah. there's there's a lot of different stuff there um so we'll we'll touch on kind of like that process if if it feels necessary but in my um my model videos i do already touch on that so we'll see if i follow up on that or not um i would just recommend checking out those um Something I have not done a video on and we're going to touch on here is the Fiverr Editor program. Uh, that is what lets you open up Fivers. Um, Fivers are the file type for this game. Um, so what we'll do is I'll kind of just get into it here a little bit to show you how it works. So uh, Fiverr Editor is this right here. Uh, I just made a shortcut of it, put it on my desktop there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up any set of armor here. Uh, we'll do the Lothric Knight one and then DS3 and then see these are unpacked using Yabber. Um, and then we'll grab the fiber right here and we're going to drop it on top of the fiber editor. And then you can see right here, this little window pops up with our fiber. This, this is the model for armor or weapons or just about any model in the game is in this format. So that is what Fiverr Editor does. It opens them up. It allows you to um, modify or delete meshes, although it is fairly limited in your modification abilities. It's mainly just rotating and resizing or deleting. So it's fairly limited. This fire editor is not, not where you want to do your modeling. This is a nice, you know, like, okay, I can see it here. And then this is, we're going to save it so that the game sees it. That's, that's what that's for, but I'll make a video on fiber itself, but that's what fiber editor does. It opens fibers. That's, that's it. Um, 
So that's pretty critical and helpful. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you kind of need in the world of souls modding and that kind of thing here. So let me rack my brain. Um, param editors. Um, you would do something along the lines of using Yapt. Yapt is a param editor program. We'll open it up real quick. I have several videos that utilize Yapt and then I have videos on how to set up Yapt already. So we'll keep it cool here, but while you're here, we'll talk about it. Um, Yep, is for editing params. Params are what control um, a, a number of things. Like right here, we've got equip param goods, which is all of the items in the game. You got smithing stones, uh, ash of war, golden seed. Um, protector here is all of the armor. Uh, you can go find an armor in here and you can change its resistances, stats, value, uh, upgrade path, icons, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, weapons, same deal, but that's kind of what this is for, is editing a lot of that kind of thing. Um, there's like, you can change like shop lineups, which is just like shop inventories. So like we got Merchant Kale here, um, all of his stuff. I added a shield to him. I have a video on that, so check that out or don't. Um, but Param editing is a lot of this kind of stuff. It kind of gets you into the guts of it so you can find IDs for stuff, etc, etc. Um, another really good resource to utilize is um, there's a Discord modding community for the Souls games. Uh, it's called Server Name. Uh, it is a very massive repository of a lot of resources, tools, um, people, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a little bit bloated sometimes, it seems, and it can be a little bit intimidating for newcomers and stuff like that, so that's why I made my Discord a um, friendly place for newbies to come in, get help, learn. Um, it's also just a fun place to hang out um, as we grow together and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to plug it too hard. It's, it's great, so join it or don't. Um, what else can we touch on while we are here? Let's open up my mod folder and let's take a look and see if I'm missing anything. Let's look here. Uh, we have right here some um, armor lists and weapon lists. These are just text lists of the IDs for certain armors and things like that. So you would use, say this, shows you HD M1840. Um, the way that that works is you would come in here to the parts folder and you would find that. It just tells you what's what. Um, what else can we cover? Let's think for a moment. Um, there are, of course, other tools that I didn't cover very well here, but that's because there's some stuff that I don't really know how to do. There are um, modding that requires, you know, scripting and programming, that kind of stuff. I'm not very in tune with that, but there are tools for it. Um, so those do exist. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that we've we've run our course here to the best of my knowledge on um, kind of just rambling about what things do and what they're for and expectations on that kind of thing. Um, might not be our most popular video, but I, uh, I felt that it warranted a uh, discussion on it. So we'll follow up with some, some small videos on setting things up and whatnot, but for now, you're stuck with this, so I will catch you later. If this kind of stuff is helpful, let me know. If it's not helpful, I would say let me know, but be gentle. My feelings are fragile, so I will catch you guys later.